rumors of supply shortages and display issues made us wonder if the iPad mini with retina display was indeed going to make it to our teardown table this month. But the buzz around the cryptic release date of sometime in November started again last night and of course we made sure to get our hands on the iPad mini first thing. So grab your eye openers and let's jump right in. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the brand new iPad mini with retina display. The new iPad mini with retina display measures in at 200 millimeters by 134.7 millimeters. The new retina display required a little extra room as this version is just a hint bigger than last year's model, measuring in at 7.5 millimeters, which is 0.3 millimeters thicker. It's also a bit heavier than last year's model, weighing in at 331 grams, up from 312. With our eye openers at the ready and hot off the microwave, we get to work on opening this adorable little iPad. It of course gave us some resistance, but after a little pick action, we're able to get the front glass off, revealing the display that is held in place by a few screws. And just like that, we remove the display. Speaking of the display, this guy is one of the major upgrades in the iPad mini. This 7.9 inch display has a resolution of 2048 by 1536 and a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch, up from 1024 by 768 at 163 pixels per inch from last year. Once we made it past the mighty LCD shield plate, we got our first look inside the iPad mini, which means we see a lot of battery with a lot of adhesive. So we pulled out the one-two punch of our eye opener and our scraping cards and got to work. Having to pry glued down batteries always requires a great deal of patience and care, but we did this just last week with the iPad Air, so it didn't take us long to get this one out. This is a 6,471 milliamp hour, 3.75 volt, 24.3 watt hour lithium polymer battery, which is quite a bump from the battery in the first iPad mini. But all those additional pixels have to get their juice from somewhere. The logic board had a nice surprise for us, no adhesive. Apple cleverly fit the logic board over a couple of screw posts, making replacing it much easier than its big brother, the iPad Air. On the board, we saw some familiar sights. The A7 processor is the same one found in the iPhone 5S, and according to recent Geekbench scores, is clocked at 1.3 gigahertz, just a bit slower than the iPad Air. The M7 coprocessor that we saw in the iPad Air and iPhone 5S is also present on this version of the mini, processing all that data from the sensors on your tablet and saving a lot of power. And what's this? There's a hole in my logic board. This may be a weight saving solution from Apple. Most likely this will not be in the cellular version versions of the mini, but we'll just have to wait and see. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The iPad mini with retina display scored a 2 out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the LCD and glass are not fused together and can be replaced independently. And the battery is not soldered to the logic board or other components. But on the downside, copious amounts of adhesive hold many components in place, making repair extremely difficult. The lightning connector is soldered to the logic board, and hidden screws mean you'll need to be very diligent when trying to remove internal components. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit, and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit. It.